Hey guys, what's going on? I'm FYI Pawn, and welcome back to Iridus, Lord of the Dead. Since we last left off, we managed to make our way through the catacombs, a mage infested area, which we managed to cleanse of their. Well, we managed to cleanse them of most of their problems, and, well, most of our problems, I should say. And we managed to get to the cathedral, which is the last supposed area that we have to explore. I'm not sure if we're going any further than that, but we'll see. I think there's one more area, but I will be doing that on Sunday, I think. We'll have to see how things play out. But, without further ado, let's get into things and see what happens. We've we got quite a bit to cover. I might have to turn the uh, volume down on this, so give me a second. Uh, game, audio, no, we need to go to sound. We'll turn that down just, no, we'll keep it up a bit. We'll uh, turn down the volume a bit. About there. We should be good, okay. But yeah, since we last left off, I had to do a bit of a rush job uh, nearing the end of the game or nearing the end of the last session, so let's take a good long moment to see what we ended up getting. Well, we managed to get some nice tier level 33 brains, which is nice. Okay. We got a few unique items here and there, but otherwise it's just pretty standard for what we usually do, so... I think it's high time to level up as much as we can and see what we can get from there. We'll get some more evasion, naturally. Alright, stats, more evasion probably, or I guess for the abomination not so much, more HP is more his, you know, gimmick. Uh, yeah. We'll get more evasion, we'll get more initiative, I suppose. Yeah. At the very least, being faster wouldn't hurt. Alright, accuracy is pretty nasty, but whatever. Boost up the HP a little bit. Zombie will get your initiative all the way to max. We don't need to worry too much about defense there. Alright, that's one group. Let's see, Dark Knights. Okay, your evasion's looking pretty, uh, pretty beefy already. Let's boost up your physicals, or your defenses here. That should be fine. Let's boost up initiative by a point. Alright, we've already got max initiative for the mummy, so that's fine. I think we can get away with either luck or evasion. Either would work. I think we're going to go evasion, though. Get that to max, at least. Alright, the infested. We can get a boost to evasion, I think. Or we could go with more luck, which would guarantee more crits, most likely. Accuracy is also an option. I think I'll go accuracy just to increase the chances of hitting. And finally, the Banshee is doing well, so I guess we just boost up her evasion up to a 61. Eventually, she's going to be just unhittable, which is going to be nice. Alright, as for this group... When receiving damage, the minion gains 4 evasion until the end of combat. It's pretty nasty. A uh, lost soul. I guess we boost up initiative here? Yeah, let's boost up initiative. The Lich doesn't have anything. Well, uh, he doesn't have anything just yet. But if I go with the Lich, I could probably stack up Raven Feathers to increase 
the evasion. So that way, uh, attacks are not going to be that bad on me. Hmm. Oh, okay, so when receiving damage, Dominion gains 4 evasion. Okay. Does it work when it hits the ward, though? That's a good question. Uh, Wizard Bones. Reduces magic damage received by 50%. Increases physical damage received by 25%. Hmm. Uh, any character that attacks this minion receives stress. Yeah, I don't see really much I can do with the uh, Lich, to be honest. But I mean, hey, it's something, I suppose. Uh, we will still need the Ghoul, so that is something we will have to cover at some point. But the Blood Phantasm is currently on our list right now, so... Let's see. The Blood Phantasm, we're still going to need to spend 4k Blood po or Wrath points. We're going to need to lure three vampires over to our side, and we're going to need to deal 700 and... or 365 da more damage to our ghouls before we are able to go anywhere further. Alright, before we move on, let's go and set ourselves up with all right, so we're going physical group today, or at least right now. So we're going to get the book of ancient Finally, wisdom set up. Finally, this item finds its way into my capable hands. Okay, and what else can I use here? Uh, power fist is a interesting one, but not going to be useful, I don't think. Insurance deal is pretty safe to use. I think we wear that when we go with our third group. But I think that's if we do run into a situation more than anything. No, I don't I don't think we're gonna need it. But we will need to uh, use the talents now, so let's see what we can get. Okay, finger of death. Target loses twenty five percent vigor. Or, uh, 5 per uh, Alright, so the target loses 25% plus 16.5%, or 5% plus 3.3% for bosses of its maximum vigor and sanity. It removes all buffs, it makes them lose all blocks and wards, and it ignores wards, apparently. Uh, spell power additionally increases by damage dealt by 0.25%. Bosses is 0.05 percent, so it has its it has its merits. I could also go with Conjure Shadows, which will allow us to summon a basic shade, ba Banshee or Wraith, until the end of battle, which isn't bad for this third group. It saves me from using a skeleton after all. But for now, I think I'm gonna go with the My whip. magic will shake the very foundations of this world. I'm going to grab Fate, and I'm going to grab Finger of Death to start with. Yeah, I'm going to grab hey, Finger of Death because I think I'm that's gonna be much stronger for us. Trick. As for what group we're gonna be going with, we're gonna go with group one. As we go through the final Lore. Well, not the thi final, final four, but we're going to be going through the cemetery. We've got quite a lot to cover, it seems, before we hit the boss. So let's just aim for as much quests as possible, like we usually do. So what we're probably going to do is we're going to go up here, we're going to go to the Stell. We're going to move all the way up to the Soul Spring to get we hit the quest here. And we have a decision of whether we go to the elite fight, or we go this this path, which appears to be more viable for quests. Now the question is, where do I go from there? I think I go for the quest after this elite fight, to where I can go along here to reach this area. It's not as uh, 
useful, but considering there is two quests that we can take from there, I think it's probably for the best. Or if I really want to be special about it, I could go down this route, but that's a bit shorter. Yeah, preferably I'd like to go to this battle, then we can go to this battle, and then we can either go to this quest, or we can go to the other quest on this side. Honestly, I'm probably going to go to the Sacrificial Altar, but I'll decide that once I get to the Soul Spring, or once I get to this Elite Fight. For now, though, we'll go here, we'll go around, and we'll keep going, and see how things play out. But most certainly we're going to this area by the end of it, so... Alright, let's begin. Okay, the champions are an interesting sort. Let's see how things play out. Uh, that's a lot of damage already. Jeez. The Bride is already suffering a lot. Right, let's start with a Funeral March. Jeez. Okay, we're gonna go with adore him to start. Well, no, I think we can get away with a bloody rose. Boom. Ah, your frail bodies fail you. Yeah, that is a lot of damage, though. That's pretty nasty. All right, let's get stance up. We'll go with Hunger for Hearts. We'll go with a Returning Strike, I think. You know, their accuracy is like crazy. Should probably be very careful here. Okay, nope. We're gonna go with the kill there. Oh, they get a buff because of it. Increases damage dealt by 25%. That is an interesting buff. We'll go for the crit there. Get their deal more damage, basically. We're gonna go with Hypnosis here. Get some more Wrath going. I'm probably going to need more defenses for our Bride. But for now, we're just going to go with Protect, just in case. Because you never know. Yeah, at the very least, I can get some protection going. Okay, cool. We are going to go for Guts. Get the uh, stun off, nice. Uh, we can go Heart Piercer for the champion. One by nice. one, life vanishes from this world. We're then going to use... Uh, I guess we'll use Light Caliber here. Because we need to spend as much Wrath as we can. Soon this nice. world will be mine. That's a kill. As a result, we managed to get the Ring of Purity, we got a few parts, but nothing too special. Alright, well, that injured the Bride rather quickly, which is concerning. That does tell me that I'm going to need more parts for her, if only to increase her block and ward. For a... yeah, we're going to need to give her some block and ward, most likely, so... That is something we're going to have to prep for the near future. I think that's the same case for most everybody else. But mainly focusing the bride, I would say. We're going to get the bride in the back, and we'll have the zombie there instead. Considering the circumstances, I think that's for the best. Alright, we're going to go to the stell. We're going to get uh, a level for Eridus. Okay, we now have two levels to work with. I'm going to mainly use Finger of Death for bosses, most likely. 
Uh, blind is probably going to be also for bosses, but that really depends on what we've come up facing. As for what else we can grab, I guess we could go Blind Fury and get some uh, damage boosters. But honestly, I don't think I need to go that far. Uh, honestly, I could probably go for th something like uh, Alchemy nearing the near future. Because Necromancy Power seems like a uh, good thing for us. Especially if we start using Distillation here. Which I think might be good. Alright, we've got 34 flesh, so I could probably sacrifice... Yeah, let's sacrifice some flesh. We could afford it. We've got like 34 parts of it, after all. The whole there we go. Work. Yeah, let, let's just be safe and do that. Why not? Okay. Now we've got a bit of a mixture here. So we go with this one. Let's see how that plays out. Oof, pain. Alright, Funeral March to start with. Get that debuff going. Alright, let us go with Adore him here. Because of the circumstances, we're going to be using Trench Loading to at least give more block to uh, our zombie. We're going to go for Hunger Hearts. And I guess, let's see, what's everybody's buffers here? 50% chance to redirect an attack or debuff to the Knights from an ally located behind it. Two attack until the battle ends each time the knight receives damage. Stacks up to ten times. Okay. When an ally is defeated, receive a 25% damage boost until the end of combat. There is no benefits for the priestess. And paladin. When an ally dies, reduces all incoming damage by 25% until the end of combat. Okay, so... It is in our best interest to either... It is in our best interest to focus on the champion, and then go for the paladin. So we're going to focus on the champion to start with, if we can. Okay. Okay, could you not go for... Okay. I gotta do trench loading again, so at the very least our block and ward goes up to two. Alright, I'm gonna strike the champion again. Okay, I guess we go for the knight, which is annoying, but okay. We're gonna go for unrestrained hunger to increase his damage. Abomination. I do believe we have adore him. Yep. So now we're going to go with Bloody Rose and deal with everybody. My kingdom comes. Nice. A lot of, a lot of damage coming in there. Wait, hold on. What? What the heck? Oh, he's got prayer. Hold on. That's an interesting one. Hold on. Prayer of Salvation. At the start of the next turn, the Priestess applies a Prayer of Salvation to the target. Okay, interesting. Let's go Abyssal Bombardment then. Hmm. I feel like I should be concerned, but I'm not entirely certain. Okay, I could reduce the luck on the champion, I suppose. Uh, I think the best course of action is just to defend our backline. So we're gonna get some defense there. 
And I guess we'll see. Uh, we'll go with Bloody Rose again. Because that is just a good staple for us. I will wise. soon embrace your new existence. Uh, we're going to go with Hypnosis here. There we go. Get some more Wrath going. Get some more health uh, for the uh, requirements. For the All and let's just hope our uh, damage output is going to uh, matter. <laughs> At the very least, it seems like we're doing pretty well here, so I'm not complaining. Okay, you just broke my stance. Great. Alright, we're gonna go for Gut next. Alright, you got crit there. Alright, you're dealing more damage, which is not fun. Thankfully, the miss came into play, which is good. Now we can go for Bloody Rose again. Get all that damage. Crits are going in ham, which is good. Ward and miss, perfectly fine. We can go for a deep bite. Uh, we're going to try for the champion. Managed to get the kill. Nice. That of course makes him a little more tanky, but that's perfectly fine. We'll live, so it works out. Okay, hopefully we can get the bombardments, but uh, we're going to play it safe. We'll get trench load, so that way we get some more defenses, and we should be fine. We're going to protect the... We're going to continue to protect the Bride, so the Abomination is the focus here. Alright, and he went for the stun, which is annoying, but we should be able to get the Bride. Become part of there the Breathless Tide. Alright, with that, we can now target the Paladin, or redirect. It really doesn't matter at this point. Okay, to live. That's perfectly fine. Honestly, at this point, I'm just gonna go with Accurate Volley and see if we get lucky. Yeah. I'm tired of getting these stats interrupted. Alright, we're gonna go for a deep bite. Yeah, let's go deep bite. Your kind are delightfully cruel. Oh, nice. We managed to get a uh, stun there. Now we can go for the attack for the Heart Piercer. A good staple. We'll then go with Guts, which should... Oh. He has enough armor that he's absorbing, which is not good. I guess we'll just go for the blast here. And we got crit. Nice. Not complaining. That's pretty good. A predictable outcome. And because we did so well, our regen should cover most of it. Drop of Divinity. Increases all damage dealt by 15%, reduces all damage received by 15%. Not bad. That is a really powerful uh, ability. Uh, we don't get that as a item for ourselves, but we do get it as a drop for somebody else. I think that's honestly... Yeah, no, hold on. Increases critical damage dealt by the Bride by 50%. Increases luck and critical damage until the end of battle. I think it's in our best interest to give this to the zombie. Uh, increases damage dealt by 10%. Increases accuracy and damage by 15% if we stay in the same position. Stacks up to 5 times. The bonus is removed as the zombie changes positions, but we can get the drop of divinity here, and that will increases that will increase damage and reduce damage, which is going to be needed because of this floor, I think. All right, yeah, no, we'll down the uh, drop of divinity in favor of the Satis hands, which does suck, but considering the circumstances, it's probably for the best. Abomination, he's good with the armor plates for now. Don't need to change that up too much. 
His stats should be perfectly fine for us right now. Uh, is there anything we need to change? Not really. Uh, we could probably change the blue to, or the green to blue for the zombie. That way he gets a bit more stats to work with. But honestly, it shouldn't matter too much. Yeah, no, we're fine. You know, we never did put anybody in here. We should probably do that. Let's just put our group three in here for now. Until we think of something else. Alright, talent-wise, I think we're going to need to save one more for blind, which makes the most sense. Group 2 is actually pretty good with mana, so this gives us more of a reason to play them coming near the final act. So let us go group 1 next, and let's go over to this fight here, which appears to be two paladins instead of one. And hopefully things just go our way instead of how they've been going. Honestly, I may actually try to stress group here, see how they do. Okay, gonna go with robes of protection now there. I will make mortals Spirit necklace. For me and even more what was it? Previous. Ring of Terror. Yep. There we go. Hopefully the the second group is gonna work well, but we'll have to see. Cause group two is actually pretty strong, I do believe. Well, here's praying. <laughs> Okay, let's see. There's probably going to be a 75% chance that we get all the redirected, so we're just going to have to be ready for that. Until then, I guess we're just going to fear the heck out of them. Alright, fear. Let's go with Plague Ball. Nice. Nice. The fear is coming in clutch. But mainly the evasion is probably going to be our saving grace here. Yeah, the knights have a 73% chance to hit. Uh, we have an evasion of 43. Or 63. Uh, Banshee is a very specific one, which is 87 which is insane. We're gonna go with No Tomorrow to get our stance going. Alright. Holy Age of Stance, which is deals 200 damage to any minion that deals targeted stress damage to an ally. Hmm. That's not a fun stance. Wait, hold on. Targeted stress damage. So that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to focus too much on him. We can go with Vengeance Beam here. Hopefully. The Deluvian evil comes for you. Yeah, there we go. So, it doesn't specify area of effect damage. Does it? Ooh, hope there will still be enough yeah. to reanimate. It's only targeted stress damage. <laughs> All right. Well, the fe the the scare group is doing its work, I guess. <laughs> All right. I guess follow up with Garden of Death. There we go. Nice good old curses. Brave oh, heart attacks all across the board. Fresh corpses. Uh, I guess we'll use Ravenous Abyss here, even though we don't need to. Uh, let's go absorb power. Get rid of his buffers. And we'll make him lose evasion. Why not? Done and done. 
A sad display for mortal kind. In fact, it was way better than what we usually do. Madman's Eye. The minion receives an additional action each turn if they're the only one left in the squad. Unholy Water increases Iridus' spell power by 25, which is pretty alright. Honestly, for group 3, that might actually be the best, best way to go. We just focus on Iridus, not so much the minions for uh, damage output. Alright, let's grab Blind, Hexes a good stress damage ability. My command. Honestly, let's see, how's our, uh, how do we want to handle our spell book? I guess uh, this spell book has its own features that it runs on, I'm not sure. We'll have to think about that, but we'll, we'll we'll worry about that later. We've got bigger, we've got a lot of brains to worry about, anyways. Not that we need to, but hey, got a lot of stuff here. Uh, transmutation converts three parts of any type into a different type. I guess we can sacrifice some stuff. Why not? Let's see. It's no goal, but it will do. Oh, we managed to make the steel plate spikes. Whoops. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to use transmutation here. Ah, oh, well. Let's start making some stuff. Okay, that didn't do anything. How about bones? Okay, we managed to make another armor. Oh, right, we have to choose something specific, don't we? Right, something specific. Alright, managed to get uh, blue tier armor, though, so that's nice. That is enough for the Dark Knight, I suppose, if we want to boost him a up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we can get the armor. We'll get a small bo boost to him, which is nice. Uh, let us boost his initiative to a 9. That'll help somewhat, I'm sure. Alright, to the dungeon. Group 2 is probably going to be the staple here until we can figure out something else. We'll probably do group 3 a little bit as well, just so we have some variety going on. But we shouldn't need to focus on them more than anything. But yeah, no, we're going uh, this direction, and then we'll see how things play out. Okay, we're gonna go with... Hmm. Alright, we're gonna go with Plague Fall. Start with, uh, I guess, the Paladin here. Now that's gonna be a mark. Yeah, might as well. Why not? We're gonna go with Slake with Darkness, probably. Yeah, we'll go Slake with Darkness. Get some more fear going. We will follow up with. Ravenous Hunger, maybe? Seems like an odd choice, but why not? We want to get as much uh, use out of our wrath as possible, after all. Okay, Miss and Ward. That's nice. We're gonna go with Vengeance Beam here. There we go. Curse is coming in clutch. Accelerando comes in. And there we go. Nice crits and debuffs. Always perfect. Prayer of Salvation, I see. I mean, that's a way to go. Still not the best way to go, though. 
Here, have a so, curse. This is what a thousand years of evolution looks like. <laughs> Pathetic. All right, face to faceless. There we go. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's a miss. Ah, betrayal. <laughs> oh, right, they have the damage buffer. Let's get rid of that. Oh, we can't get rid of it. Rip. All right, accelerate on then. First mistake. Opposing me? Your last. All right. <laughs> All right, you managed to recover some sanity. Good job. Uh, probably not gonna help in the grand scheme of things, though. For example, plague ball. Carve open their husks. Yeah, that's nasty. <laughs> plague fall is really doing work. All right, dire curse. Ah, ward. You have managed to get some protection. Okay, I guess we're lo making you just in a worse position than before. Uh, Plague Fall should do it. There we go. Nice. That's a clear. <laughs> Alright, that is uh, Group 1 then. Alright. Yeah, no, Group 1 has a significant prowess, I think, than uh, Group our group 2 has a significant prowess compared to group 1, I think. Which does suck a little bit, but considering the circumstances, I can understand why. I think we're going to stick with the robes of potence and the spirit necklace from now on. Because I don't see us getting more benefit from the vigor. Rather, I think it's more beneficial if I just stick with the uh, dodge chance, or the evasion chance rather than the uh, physical chance. Because at the very least, I'm going to get more evasion for the vampire, I'm going to get more evasion for the abomination. The zombie and the bride are also going to be much more evasive, which makes lo our lives easier. And we can also boost our evasion just a smidgen more if we ever need it for the zombie. But honestly, with the bride of Iridus going around, I think it's in our best interest to focus on that. Just so she's, like, somewhat tanky, I would say. We did manage to get some new bones for the bride, so all the more reason to, uh, go for the evasion. We'll get 12, we'll get to 45 evasion. And we'll boost up our luck by an additional two points. So that way we get more crits to our, uh, potential. Okay, we've got uncommons. We need uncommon meat if we if we want anything in particular. Alright, we're gonna go transmutation. We wanna focus on flesh. Let us toss in some flesh, ah, try and grab some. Smell of successful alchemy. <laughs> Alright, we managed to get some uncommon, we managed to get some rare, good. With this, we can uh, upgrade the bride a little bit more by giving her some better quality flesh. And we can probably boost her accuracy, but no, we're going to save up for the uh, evasion. I want to at least get the evasion up to max for her. That way I can get her to 49, in addition to the 18. That will give her a total of 75% mischance, which is quite powerful for us. But I digress. We're going to go with group 1, and we'll see how things play out. While you have been focusing most of your attention on the moment-to-moment -moment decisions that shape your campaign, you have not neglected your personal development. Delving into the dark arts have, has great allure and there is much new power still to be uncovered. Faced with many heavy armored holy foes, you feel that you are on the verge of a breakthrough. 
Hmm. Either I will negate the power of their armor, or reveal the secrets of corruption. This sounds like a overall debuff against them. I'm going to reveal the secrets of corruption. This will negate their holy resistances, I'm assuming. In a flash comes a realization, and you quickly weave together a new spell of your own making. Your deck, dark necromancy severs the holy connections that the humans have maintained between themselves and their artifacts. While temporarily, or while temporary, it will leave them vulnerable. At the cost of 40 mana, for 3 battles, all enemies lose all resistance. Okay, so this gives me all the more reason to focus on the on the uh, the second party, not the first one. So as much as I want to do the first party, we're actually going to go second party. Because they're going to be a lot better for this. <laughs> Unexpectedly so, but... It fits them, so yeah, let's go with that, I suppose. To the battle! Alright, let's go for the Priestess. Parish. Get as much ward removed as possible. Nice. We're then gonna follow up with Slake with Darkness. Get a full ward debuff there. No tomorrow to get our stance set. Alright, he's gonna go with Holy Aegis. Which is not going to help in this circumstance, because here, <laughs> Your cries AoEs. Are music to me. Ah, insanities. Nice. Alright, Vengeance Beam. Even more. Oh, that. there goes the Priestess, there goes another one. The debuffs go hand in hand. Ah, a double miss. Okay, well, no tomorrow seems like the best course here. We're going to expend Garden of Death. Ah, even more curse. Maybe I'll crack Lovely. this one into furniture. <laughs> well, that works. That was a quick clear. Nice. Ashes of a Burned Witch. Set enemies on fire for two turns when minion uses an ability. Dealing six damage with AoE abilities, dealing 15 with single target abilities. Interesting. A burn. That's pretty good. Uh, we managed to get a ladle, a light armor, and a creepy doll. Alright, but anyways, let's see. Uh, set enemies on fire is a good... I guess that's a pretty good damage ability. It would be pretty good for the Bride of Iridus if we didn't already have luck and critical damage as a focus for her. Uh, is there anything I can do to increase her damage just a little bit? Increases critical damage by 20%, reduces critical damage received by 20%. Let's see. So this is a ultimately a 30, but we don't go into a battle long enough for it to be reaching that position, I don't think. Plus, if it's only in three or the third or fourth position, it works. So let's see. Um... This would increase critical damage by 15, and it would increase the critical chance by 15, I believe, at, at the end of its, uh, you know, lifeline there. Alright, Martyr Rags protects people from behind, which is interesting. In fact, that might actually be pretty good with uh, one of our 
characters, or it might be good with the uh, the shade, I think, which is an interesting circumstance. <laughs> Second Slipper. Banshee restores 20% vigor each time an enemy attacks her. Honestly, that might be better than the Golden Tooth. Yeah, no. Getting the Restoration is going to be, you know, a really helpful thing. Especially if they start trying to target her. So it's just a saving... It's like a safety net, of, if anything. You know... I've been thinking about how to address the ghoul, and how to make them more powerful. I think there's a good way to do that, actually. The Nails of Pain might actually be a pretty good thing for him. Because he does a lot of criticals, so the critical damage increase is not bad. It's a lot better than the Serpent Skull, I think. Because it's not like we're going to... well... I guess we do get more luck because of it. And we do go for a percent of damage. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it for now, but I feel like there's potential there. Uh, there is the mummy, though, which we can upgrade, I think. Uh, let's see. Uh, every successful ability using grants Dominion a chance to strip enemies of armor and resistance by a 50% for single target and 25% for AoE. Not bad. Uh, it would be better than the Soul Gem, I think. Uh, alternatively, there is things like Spider Mandibles, which does percentage damage, which is really powerful. Ashes of a Burned Witch are pretty interesting. I think I go for the critical damage here, though. Because we do have a lot of luck with the mummy. Uh, let's see. At the start of its turn, the mummy restores 4 vigor on each curse on the enemies. Well, he doesn't get that damage that much, so not that big a concern. But the Acid Gland might actually be pretty good. Getting rid of armor and resistance is pretty dope, so yeah, we'll do that. Alright. We could either go for Spiked Head here, or we could go for the one that actually redirects attacks from the Mummy to the Dark Knight. Which is actually something of a good staple, I think. I don't know. Uh, we'll definitely get the initiative, though. We'll get the initiative boosters, so that way we're a bit more protected. We'll get some more armor for the Banshee, just in case. And we'll go from there. We're definitely going to be focusing evasion, though, for the uh, Banshee. Getting her to her highest point of uh, evasion possible. Alright, with that, then we should be good. I think. Yeah, we should be good. Uh, if we had that mask, uh, much like the, uh, much like we have in the graveyard, then I consider it more. But we should be fine. All right. Uh, enemies lose all resistance. Two battles. So we got two more battles before we shift to our next group. So we're gonna go for the battle here. Alright, let's see. Okay, we're gonna go for the... I guess we go for Plague Fall, as we usually do. We'll try and focus on the Paladin, but get redirected. <laughs> ah, well. We are going to use No Tomorrow here. Alright, the Holy Aegis dance begins. We're going to go with Vengeance Beam here. Your frail bodies fail you. 
All right, even more fear. <laughs> All right, let us go with Sleek with Darkness. Get even more fear going. Let's go Accelerando here. Reduce their damage dealt by us. Or their damage we suffer from them anyways, I should say. And now the bugs begin. Either that or the curses, but we'll see. Ooh, oh, this one boy, <laughs> heart attack. Bowels just as it died. Garden of Cur or decay. Ah, that's yet another heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> they die at round two, which is nice. Face to faceless, just get rid of them. There we go. Nice. And we could probably continue from here really quick. No need to uh, hesitate. Oh, you know, if this keeps up, I'll be done purging the world ahead of schedule. All right, infused dagger, crushed bones deals 50 plus 71 magic damage. Additionally, deals 100 more damage if the target is stunned. That is good for our physical group, I think. Uh, spiked ring, uh, ear. Each round, Iridus gains 12 wrath. Yeah, we're fine. Uh, sacrificial altar. I guess we'll sacrifice uh, group 3 here, or group 4 rather. Uh, sorry to say, werewolf, but your time has come. And we managed to get managed to get the thing I wanted, Jester's Visage. And there's Gambling Chip. Okay, let's actually uh, equip that real quick. Because I know the Gambling Chip is going to get us more parts, which now only I makes things make better. Now mortals tremble before me. Well even more than previously. And with that, we can move on with second group two, and uh, yeah, I think we go for, all right, so there's three fights here, and there's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six events here. So I think it's in our best interest to go along the grave route here, so that way we get more stuff. Uh, because we don't actually need to focus on a Soul Spring, I don't think. But we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Mercenary Captain. Interesting. Uh, they've got a massive to hit, it seems. Which is gonna be nasty for us, I think. Because that means they've got even more chance to hit us than anybody else does. Yeah, that accuracy is going to be going to take us out in the near future, most likely. Um, I will need to figure out how to change spells, so give me a second. Oh, I see. Okay. Let's see. Ah, so that's it. Okay. So you can actually change things if you wish. We are going to put in... Uh, we're going to start with putting in Sorrow here. We're going to do Flaming Skull and change that to a AoE. Just like with Darkness. We are then going to go with a blind in prep and finger of death here for our second tier of spells we are going to go with let's see yeah we're going to want debuffs mainly but we'll go with buffs and debuffs here okay we've got whip we then got uh fate so those are three buffs, and then we'll get three debuffs. So Blood Curse, we will get a Muck. And what else? I guess Battle Eternal is a good staple for us. Uh, did we cover Sorrow? Yeah, we covered Sorrow, okay. 
We won't be able to get the benefits of Flaming Skull, but we should be fine. Let's see, we got everything but, yeah, the Skull, so we'll just have the Battle Eternal here, just in case. But you never know. Let us go with... Slake with Darkness, to start with. And I guess immediately start with Garden of Death. Get that uh, crit curse going. Or the nasty Garden of Stress. <laughs> we'll set up No Tomorrow to get our stress set up. Or at least our stress stand set up, I should say. Alright, the Aegis begins. We're gonna go with Vengeance Beam here. Still be enough left Even to more curses going through. Nice. Ah, Insanity comes toward. Cool. Accelerando to follow. There we go. Crit curse. And even more. <laughs> ah, fear. Somehow it managed to miss, which is nice. Okay, how are you... Hmm. What is with this uh, attack? Hmm. I guess it's only like a 50% miss ch or hit chance anyways, so I guess I can understand why it's not working for them. But still, jeez. Yep, Death that is uh... Delivered. That is three heart attacks, jeez. <laughs> well that works for me, I'm not complaining. But seriously, we do need to actually focus on uh, Blood Phantasm and the Ghoul, at the very least. I don't think we're going to get it through this playthrough, but then again, I wasn't expecting much from this playthrough anyways. At least, at the very least, I wasn't expecting to get all the unlocks in one time. So yeah. Uh, let's see. We could get a bonus to luck at the cost of accuracy. Which wouldn't be that bad. Because we do get a bonus to accuracy already. Uh, let's see. I guess that would increase our critical, wouldn't it? And Ring of Terror would be even... Well, I guess Ring of Terror is not going to be that good it for Group 1. My undead so, yeah. I guess we go with Symbol of Fortune here. It's a lot better than uh, getting with the other rings, I think. At least that's in my opinion, anyways. Yeah, we'll go Symbol of Fortune here. I'm not sure if it's the best choice for us, but considering how high of an accuracy we already got, I guess it's not that bad a thing. And we can always increase our accuracy to compensate, can't we? So all the more reason to consider it, right? Yeah, let's just increase our initiative with the Abomination. We'll do the same. Oh, we can't do the same with the Vampire. We can boost her uh, evasion soon. So that is probably something we're going to focus on. Same with the zombie, but for now, accuracy seems to be the go-to here. Well, I'm going to save up for now. That's the hope, anyways. Alright, but yeah, now we're going to go with uh, group 1 here. And we're going to go down the bottommost path, so that way we get more fights and more chances at quests. Let's just hope we don't get forced into this route. Okay, we get a choice of a lost soul, a... Uh, a specter, or is it a wraith? I think it's a specter, and a bone golem. We'll go bone golem. Saves us from using this one, and we could probably ditch it at that point. Okay, for this battle... Yep, we're gonna go group one and see how things play out. Okay, we've got ourselves immune to stress and ignition. Uh, the Inquisitor is an interesting one as well, so that's going to be nice to handle. We'll start with Funeral March to reduce their stats. Give us a buff as well. Okay, we're going to go with Abyssal Bombardment. That way we get some more protection going. All right. Hmm. 
target minion moves two positions forward and receives a boost to accuracy. Yeah, it's alright. We're gonna start with Adore Him, I think, just to get more damage out. Alright, we're gonna go with Deep Bite here. There we go, get rid of the block, at the very least. Alright, so you caused a buffer there, I guess? Whatever that is. Interesting. We're gonna go with Unrestrained Hunger to swap positions. Alright. Because uh, the zombie has not been focused, we can get him into a stance. There we go. And now we can start spamming Bloody Rose, I think. Yeah, why not? There we go. Chris. Alright, we're gonna go with Hypnosis here, I think. Yeah, Hypnosis. To get some uh, more Wrath. Okay, they're gonna go for the miss there. That's perfectly fine with me. Okay, they're attacking uh, our boy. We're gonna go with protect here, I think. Yeah, let's go with protect and let's just start having them redirect to our abomination. All right, nice. We're going to continue to use the stance here. Just rinse and repeat what we've been doing, and we should be fine. And besides, the Abomination is going to start pelting people with, uh, protection, or, uh, defenses. Now we go with another Bloody Rose here. Extinction crits of life! Up. Crits up the wazoo, nice. <laughs> we'll go Hunger for Hearts here, finally. And we're gonna go for Deep Bite against the Paladin? No, we're gonna go against the Champion because less damage the better. Alright, we've managed to get the block going and that'll get a kill. And now we focus on the Paladin before we focus on the uh, Light Elemental. Oh wait, hold on. At the start of the Light Elemental's turn, all allies receive two block and two wards. Against all allies, specifically. We're gonna go for the smack there. We didn't get anything. Rip. But we did get the uh, nuclear option there, so there we go. <laughs> and we'll just use Light Caliber to get rid of our... Uh, yeah, get rid of our Wrath as much as we can. Another step towards my eternal kingdom. Uh, Funeral Coin. Increases critical damage dealt by 30%, reduces critical damage received by 30%. Hmm. That is a very interesting situation, I suppose. <laughs> That's a really... I'm getting really powerful coins now at this point. Yeah, we managed to get, like, the uh, Drop of Divinity, which is nasty. Increases critical damage dealt by the Bride by 50%. Um, it's at this point that we've got to decide. Do we want crit chance and crit damage? Or do we just want straight up crit damage? Which is probably just going to be better. Yeah, let's do it. 30% critical damage uh, dealt is going to be 30%. That's going to make the Bride of Iritus even more insane as it is. Her stats are currently still there, so we'll just leave it at that. Let's just keep going with our group. Alright. From here, we're gonna have to go any- We're, we're gonna have to go uh, either this way or this way anyways, so... Yeah, I guess we'll just keep going the main hall here and just hope for that. Alright, what do we get? Hatchet. All minions gain two attack and dread. Smoking gun. Minion gate. Minions and enemies gain 20 accuracy until the end of battle. 
Ah, uh, no. That's a bad one. Science Mantle. Each round of combat you're just gonna use... No. Ah, we'll grab the gun, but we're this. never going to use it. The reason I'm not going to use it is because accuracy means that they're going to hit more. Which means much more hell for us. I'd rather us not get that if we can help it. Rather than actually grabbing it. Because that is only just going to make our lives worse. Uh, Rise of Carnage. All minions gain... T all minions and enemies gain 12 luck. All minions deal additional damage. And all minions receive less damage. Hmm. At the very least, they're going to grab Blind I Fury now. nothing but my anger to purge this world. Okay, we're going to go for the battle here and see how that plays out. Hopefully, successfully. Alright, start with Funeral March. Alright, we're going to go with Trench Loading to get some protection starting off. Alright, we're going to get Door Him to get more damage output. And then we're going to activate Hunger for Hearts just in case. And we're going to aim for a Deep Bite on whom? I guess the Champion is the best course here. I was right to give him defenses. <laughs> Otherwise, they would probably be ganging up on my, uh, zombie right now. But I do think the, uh, evasion is really helping right now, so... All the more reason to buff and prepare against them. Okay, we're gonna go for an Abyssal Bombardment immediately. We're going to go for Hypnosis to get a bit more uh, Wrath going. Not that we need to, but it never hurts. Now for the crit. Kill, my darling, kill! Nice. The big damage comes into play. Okay, for this we're going to want to use Protect on our zombie, actually. Just in case, you never know, right? And now the barrage begins. Good, good. More materials. Cool. Ooh, I didn't think it would be this easy. Uh, we're actually gonna go with Light Caliber and send the Paladin off. There this we go. Will be your and I guess the uh, Bride is now at 71% evasion. Geez, 71? That's pretty nasty. Vampire is 65, Abomination is 43, but all those numbers matter. Okay, we're gonna go with Deep Bite here. We're gonna target the... We're gonna target the Inquisitor, because they don't have that much ah, physical your frail resistance. Your bodies fail you. Alright, we're gonna go with Bloody Rose, get some kills there, most likely. Nope, we just got one. Which works out, I suppose. Oh, nice try. <laughs> Alright, uh, we're definitely not gonna be using uh, Guts, because that is going to just be ignored, most likely. So I think it's in our best interest to protect the Bride currently. Alright, we're gonna go for Accurate Volley, I think. That'll deal 61 damage in. But it's enough to get the kill. Alright, for the Bride, we're going to just go for the attack on the Mercenary here. A good staple. We'll send the... Well, no, we don't need to. We'll, we'll just stab, I think. But actually, no. Hypnosis first. There we go. Get some more wrath going. Okay, I guess we're gonna protect the, or, uh, the vampire here at this point. 
And Heart Piercer should do the job. Oh, nope, never mind. Okay, Deep Bite maybe. That'll get some healing if it hits, but whatever. No, Light Caliber. Boom. Miss. Oh my good giddy on. Okay. Alright. I guess break. Not that I need to do this, but whatever. We just need to spend as much rest as we can. Boom. Done. Finally. <laughs> Got a bit unlucky there, but that's probably for the best. I'd rather be unlucky now than later. Especially when we deal with the boss. That is going to be an issue. Uh, minions made up of four uncommon parts or more gain additional 20 vigor during battle. Hmm. Whenever an enemy moves, they receive eight physical damage and stress damage. I think the Amulet of Perfection is pretty nice, though. So long as they're made up of uncommon parts or more, uh, 20 vigor is not bad. It's basically an upgraded version of what we got currently. Uh, we'll stick with our current group, and we'll see how things play out. We've got a coffin here. Okay. Martyr's Rags, Orb of Negation, or the Sacrificial Stone. The minion restores 100% vigor when an ally dies. I'm going to grab this. Specifically for the Lich, actually. Because if he starts sacrificing allies, that's... I guess, technically, summons, that's probably going to be the best. Performs two actions in a row, takes up two adjacent positions, can't be moved. While the standard bearer is alive, his allies take 50% less stress damage. Interesting. Start with Funeral March here, then. Uh, I would be worried about the standard bearer if he was a... concern? But he isn't. At least in my eyes, anyways, he's not. We'll activate Hunger for Hearts. And let's see, what's his protection? It's not that great. We'll just go for the Deep Bite and see how that goes. Yeah, we get the heal. We're perfectly fine. Let's do Adore Him. Get that buffer going. Ah, nice try. <laughs> okay, good job. Ah. Alright, you've taken out one of my wards. Okay. We'll go unrestrained hunger now. Get some boost to damage. Ward goes down, but that's perfectly fine. Let's start abyssal bombarding. Let's, st let's start throwing down the pain. Pain for the pain train. Let us use Hypnosis here. Get some more Wrath. And now let's use the Bride of Irritus to start spamming Bloody Rose. Savor these start last crits. few heartbeats. Miss and blocks, okay. Alright, ward and miss. Good. Alright, let's go for a Protect on the the Vampire. Honestly, I should probably do it for the Zombie, because he suffers the most. That's... yeah. I think we should be fine. Uh, let's go Light Caliber here. It's dealing 122 to 130 damage. Might as well, right? That's some powerful potency. We'll go with Deep Bite here. There we go. We'll move the Bride back before we do Bloody Rose. Boom. Nice juicy 100 damage crits. <laughs> okay, there goes the debuff, but that doesn't stop the Abomination at least. That was a miss, but unfortunately, that's just par for the course. We'll protect the zombie. And we'll move on. 
Uh, let's go with Abyssal Bombardment now. In favor of focusing on Bloody Rose for our Terra Bride of Eridus. Then we will, uh, slake... Well, well, we'll focus on the Deep Bite, actually. Get as much healing as possible before we wrap up the fight. We'll have to see. Oh, wrong move. Oh, maybe. Hmm. And I guess we go gut. There we go. Got a 31 crit. <laughs> nice. As your suffering ends, your service begins. Yeah, so looking at it, uh, my abomination has been suffering a two hits penalty, which does suck a little bit. But then again, he was... It's not like I was expecting him to hit often. But really, it's starting to become a problem now, so we should probably boost that up just a smidgen. Uh, we should be fine for leaving the zombie alone. If we can get his luck up by one point, then it should be fine. Alright, we've managed to get 12 points, which is enough to maximize evasion. So the Bride of Iridus is now perfectly fine to go front instead of the zombie. Because that is, like, what? Nearly a 76% chance to evade attacks, which is pretty good. Alright, that leaves group 1 and 2, and off we go. We're gonna go to the quest here. Hmm. A mortal army can't fight without food. Another of the many advantages of undeath. After stumbling across the, an undefeated store or undefended storage room, you see several ways in which you can exploit this opportunity. But you will need to do so quickly before the gods that were supposed to protect the stash returns. Let us spend some time to sabotage their rations personally. <laughs> Alright, funeral march. Start with the debuff there. Yeah, the accuracy debuff and the evasion debuff is pretty nice. We're gonna start with Abyssal Bombardment immediately. We will activate Hunger for Hearts. Get ourselves a... Reach... Or a... A regen. Uh, let's see, who do we target? I guess we target the a Mercenary Captain mainly. Okay, we're gonna activate Adore him here. Get that nice juicy buffer going. And that is an 81% evasion chance. That's nasty. I could see it was the right choice to do so. Yeah, it was the right choice to do what I was doing. Oh, that's a whip. Unrestrained hunger. Here we go. Alright, they're gonna, Blow them they're gonna to make pieces. them lose all their block, which is good. We are then going to do another Abyssal Bombardment. And because now that all of their block is gone, That's we can now block. crit them to high hell. <laughs> okay, we'll throw down a Hypnosis. Um, we are doing pretty well. We're going through the cathedral currently, and we are currently clearing up, uh, quite a lot of the minions. Um, I've come to realize that I do have a little bit of an issue with our physical group, but considering I'm trying to grind up, uh, wrath usage and use up as much health from my, uh, vampire as possible, it's sort of just to unlock the achievement more than anything. So it's really a sort of question of whether I can, uh, well, not a question of whether I can do it or not, but once we reach a certain point, I'm probably going to have to swap uh, the Abomination and Vampire out, I think. And maybe even the Zombie, because uh, he's suffering quite a bit because he has a low evasion chance. And we're starting to reach that point where evasion is more, more important to us My than uh, actual tankiness. But I digress. We're getting, we're getting there, so we just need to avoid, you know, 
our zombie dying at this point. Okay, we're gonna take the mercenary captain out. There we go. Okay, the vampire is gonna want to go with a deep bite. We're gonna take out the standard bear now. One more for the stockpiles. I mean, if they are, I would certainly love to play it, honestly. I would imagine, like, having something like an Orc Warlord would be also a very interesting, you know, situation to be playing as. But that's just, you know, random theories for the future. But it's very clear that uh, our zombie is not going to survive if we don't kill this, so... Let's clear the Paladin, and let's just save our zombie from more suffering. Mop up the gore. I'd hate to see plants. All right, using unstable it armor gives us block and ward. Uh, Lantern of Souls. When an enemy dies, minion restores twenty five vigor. And Vulture's Feather is good if we kill somebody, but we don't. So, I mean, I'm not gonna complain if we do get something like that. After having dealt with the mortals trying to retrieve their supplies, you turn your attention back to the provisions. Carefully applying one of your own personal hexes, the effect should be near instantaneous. In battle, all enemies lose 20 vigor and 20 sanity for two battles. That is nasty. Okay, I can vibe with that. If we can avoid fights, that'd be pretty nice, but I don't think we're get, are gonna get a lot of benefit from it. The most we could probably do is go to this quest and get a chance to debuff the boss, but we'll see. Uh, what we're gonna do though, is before we move on, we're going to send our zombie in for medical. And I think we get rid of the bone golem because we don't need it, but that's my personal thoughts. We will be definitely swapping into our infested group, or our second group I should say. Okay, is there anything we want to equip, though? Hmm. Not really. Well, I guess I could get, like, a uh, thing like Creepy Doll. We're, we've been saving so much of it that I don't actually need it. Might as well put it to use, right? <laughs> Alright, we're gonna start with this, our fear group, and let's clear. Okay, we're gonna start with Slake of Darkness, just to get the, uh, just to get the wards removed. Uh, they've already been applied their curse, so that's good. Let us go with Plaguefall on the Zealot. My kingdom get rid of comes. That. Okay, the percentage to flee is only, it's only a subpar amount. But that's perfectly fine. We'll just use the stance and make them flee even more. Alright, Vengeance Beam. Nice. Curses. Oh, the fear has increased. Chance to escape is more likely. Accelerando. We'll get the kill. Oh, another heart attack. Let's see. Any more? Not yet. Okay, any more fear that I should be wary about? Uh, nope. We should be able to just play Fall It and go from there. There we go. Toss them in with the and rest. there! We didn't even get the fire off. Or they My didn't get the fire off, so yeah. Tied Unharmed. Wash away <laughs> your pathetic civilizations. I mean, hell, we managed to get the creepy doll as well, so that's nice. Kind of surprised that actually worked so fast. <laughs> okay, but anyways, um, uh, let's see. I guess we can get the uh, necromancy Through power now. Transformation, the will becomes free. We're going to be using necromancy power coming near to the boss, I think. So we'll benefit from that, I'm sure. For now, though, let's just get another level for Eardis. Because, you know, it never hurts. And we're going to go focus on this quest here, I suppose. 
Or at least one of the two quests here. Alright. Light Elemental, Calvaryman, and Knight. I think the Knight is the most concerning at this point. Well, not the most concerning, but the Calvaryman is probably going to be our focus here. So we'll just help him. I hope there will still be enough left to reanimate. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. We're going to go with No Tomorrow. Get that stance set up. Alright, miss. There, There's a surprising hit from uh, our ghoul. Twice now, which is shocking. Okay, how are they hitting the ghoul? He's, yeah, he's got like a 60% miss chance. Jeez. Oh well. Alright, time to curse, I suppose. <laughs> Shatter their morale. I think the only thing that we can't deal with so easily is the light elemental, but we should be fine. Let's hope we get the, uh... Let's hope death overtakes them, really. <laughs> Alright, that's a solid miss set. Uh, let's just go garden fall with the cavalryman. Yep, instant death. Nice. Alright, let's go with Ravenous Abyss. At least get some help from it. We are then going to go with... What? I think it's a... Uh... I guess we go with Dire Curse and Ignite here? One less and there we go. In the world. And then we start with spamming Deafening Whale. To start dealing more damage. Because now it's time to do physical damage to this thing. Alright, we're gonna start with Rapid Sling. The hand of there we go. We're not gonna get as much chance to actually deal damage to the Light Elemental as we would, because obviously the block is in the way. But we can move left and we can start using. We're going to try our best to get as much damage out, given the circumstances. Deafening Whale to give everybody a buffer again, and let's keep going. Thankfully, the Banshee's uh, good evasive maneuvers are worthwhile. And we get a ton of crits with our infected ghoul, so... He's just a good staple to have for us. A predictable <laughs> outcome. We suffered some damage, but we should heal that up nice and readily. Yep, there we go. Uh, Stat-wise, we can upgrade Evasion to its next level. Now we've got Evasion 20. That'll help us somewhat, I'm sure. Now we boost up our initiative, get that to max. Now we've got the Mummy, which has 10. I think we go for a ward buff, I think. Or we upgrade our luck. I think it's in our best interest to up our accuracy to start with. Get that maxed. And then we could do the same for the ghoul, but we're going to focus in on evasion first. Because he kind of needs it. As for the banshee, we'll just boost her evasion to 65. And hopefully we can make her so it's she's unhittable, which will be an interesting situation to play out. <laughs> okay, with that, then, uh, we could probably go with our physical group now at this point. We shouldn't need to worry too much now. Alright. We'll go with our physical group, start targeting this group here, and we'll see what happens. Alright, Funeral March to start off. That way we debuff them. Yeah, I could, I could swap it out if you want me to. Nothing stopping me, to be honest. 
I don't mind uh, swapping out the Banshee to another costume. It's not like I'm doing much anyways. And honestly, I'm doing fine with the groups as is. I've just sort of been rocking the OG group as, a, as of late, so... I could swap things up a little bit. Alright, we're gonna go for... I think we go for the Royal Gunner. Uh, let's go... Flaming Skull, maybe? Nah, not Flaming Skull, but we're definitely gonna get rid of that block. We should definitely do that. Alright, we're gonna go for a door in there. There we go. Sniper Stance. Deals 100% damage to... Alright, hold on. Let's wait for my turn. There we go. Deals 100% damage to any minion that after they perform any turn. I I'm sorry, what? Okay. Okay, I guess that's a thing. Um. Hmm. Target menu uses 12 luck, gets more damage. Target enemy loses 50 luck till the end of battle. We could make him reduce the luck, I suppose. Okay. You know what? Let's get with this. And then we'll do Abyssal Bombardment so we get a uh, guaranteed crit with our Abyssal Bombardment. We are then going to go with Unrestrained Hunger here. There we go. Failed to manage to get that hit. We're going to go with Hypnosis here to get ourselves some uh, Wrath. Alright, nice. The block goes in. And now we can do Bloody Road. Well... Yeah, no, we're going to do Bloody Rose because if we do get away from him, then we're going to interrupt the zombie. Which is not what we do. <laughs> Rather, we just want to deal as much damage as possible and... Ow! That is painful, okay. Yeah, we need we need to deal with this mercenary, or the, uh, the gunner. He's going to be a nuisance no matter what we do. Uh, we're going to go with Protect on the Bride. That way, at the very least, his attacks are redirected. Yeah. We're then going to do a... Yeah, we can't do magic damage to him, so that's kind of pointless. Uh, we can do blind to him, I suppose. But that requires us to break the ward, though. Which we don't have access to, so... We're gonna go for deep fight here. We managed to get the stun off. So, off we go. Nice. We're gonna go with Light Caliber, and we're going to shoot the Inquisitor. Might as well. That's an insta-kill. Jeez. <laughs> we'll go Bloody Rose, just so for the sake of hitting. Hitting both of them, that is. Honestly, I think I might just ignore Ignition. At least for a little while. I'm not sure what it is, it's just I don't think I need it. Alright, managed to get the skip turn. Alright, let's just continue uh, getting more HP here. And I think by this point we now have the uh, requirements for the duel. But I'm not 100% certain. Well, at the very least, we'll caliber it up. And there we go. That's the fight. Soon this world will be mine. Level 43 IQ brains, though. That's pretty nice. We've got some uh, powerful brains waiting for us, I'm sure. Okay. Let's see. Creations. Okay, we still need to deal 95 more damage before we're reaching the maximum there for the ghoul. 
So we just need to apply the Vampire's Bleed debuff to her a few more times. For now, though, let us use Extraction. Just, well, no, not Extraction, but Distillation here. Because we do need the HP. So we're going to do uh, that, get some heals, and get some buffer going. Later. Because if I'm not mistaken, I did pick up the talent for it. Uh, yeah. The only thing we didn't pick up is Calcination Mastery. But we did get receive we did receive necromancy power, so every time we use distillation, um, we're doing ourselves a favor by uh, increasing our damage and reducing said damage. Okay, Fount of Restoration, that will restore HP or mana. I really should have just saved it for the uh, group here. Ah well, uh, might as well just go bigger. Not that we need it, but whatever. Okay, Elite Squadron. I'm going to use Group 2 for this one in particular because I'm more confident with them handling an Elite Group right now than I am the first group. Mainly because they have more evasion. I will swap their appearance though, coming next fight. I just forgot about doing that. Okay, the standard bear specifically needs to go, which, while annoying, I don't really have much of a choice. Uh, let's see. Until then, I guess we focus on... Let's focus on the elite champion, I think. Yeah. Your frail bodies fail you. At the very least, the, the uh, damage is still substantial. It is a percentage damage, damage after all for the uh, infected. Okay, Holy Aegis Dance coming in. We should be able to get Accelerando here. Alright, the ward comes in clutch for them. Not enough though. Then we go in with Vengeance Beam here. Nice, the curse is coming in. Now that the standard bear lacks ward, we should be able to take them out quite simply. Alright, let's throw down a Garden of Death. Get that debuff going. This now everybody be should be su suffering severe amounts of uh, <laughs> stress. Alright, let's once again, go back to no tomorrow, because the more, the more we have, the better. Oh, I guess the ghoul's just being sent backwards. Nasty, but okay. Alright, let's go for another Vengeance Beam. It should be the kill for some. Uh, let's see. Yep, heart attack. Any more? Any more takers? Nope, but we can go Accelerando here. Get some even more curses. There we go. Another heart attack. Heart attack, and that just leaves the knight here. Yeah, he's not having a good time. <laughs> Seems like they're focusing my infected, though, which is not fun. A predictable outcome. Well, at least we, at least we managed to work it out in the end. The minion's abilities ignore both block and wards. It's alright. Alright, but we're gonna throw the infested in here to get some healing. And we can probably rock our physical group now. And we're going to wait until we get to this quest instead of going for the immediate one here. I have a feeling that's going to be more beneficial as we go to the boss. Just a personal preference though. Okay, we got more of those. Not that we need them. How's Craftsman looking? We need 2,214 more Wrath spent. So all the more reason to go with the first group here. To spend as much Wrath as possible. Okay. We're gonna go Funeral March. Cool. 
and I think we can get away with a light caliber if we are trying hard enough. But instead, I think it's in our best interest to go trench load, just in case. Call it a hunch, I guess. We're going to activate Hunger for Hearts here. We will get a deep bite going, but we're going to target the... Yeah, we can't target the standard here, so... I guess the cavalry, Cavalryman is the only one we can target. We'll get that buffer for the Bride of Iridus. Ah, fun. The sniper. Not going to be enjoyable. Okay, the blocks and misses are not going to be fun either. Okay. You know what? Let's go returning strike. There we go. She'll get a miss, thankfully. Good. We're going to get a protect off on the zombie here. Goodness knows he's going to need it, that's for sure. Okay. Golem takes a hit, but that's perfectly fine. We are going to then take the light caliber for the royal gunner here. We want him gone after all. This never gets old. But hey, that's not bad. Uh, we won't be able to use Bloody Rose, but that's fine. We've got Heart Piercer, so... We'll go for the attack on the Cavalryman. Don't get crit just yet, but we'll get it soon, I'm sure. Alright. Interesting. Alright. The standard bearer is coming in, trying to kill us, cause us trouble. Uh, let's go Intimidating Whale, maybe? No, we don't need it. Uh, we'll go Gut, I suppose. Hope they will still be there we go, we managed to get the double debuff on, so that's nice. Uh, we can go with Light Caliber, or we can go with something else. I'm gonna go with, uh... I'm gonna go with the Abyssal Bombardment. From here, we're going to use Hypnosis, I think? Yeah, let's go Hypnosis. Because we need to do this anyways. Alright, Standard Bear goes in, tries to cause us trouble. We'll do Bloody Rose to get more uh, Savor these last few heartbeats. We are then going to follow up with Protect, I suppose. There we go. Alright, let's go for the charge again. Annoyingly so, but that's perfectly fine. And now the barrage begins. Nice. Uh, we're gonna go with Light Caliber here, just to deal with the Standard Bear, I think. No, we'll get rid of the Cavalryman. There we go. Nice 209 crit. You will be worth something in death. Alright, we're gonna go with the deep bite here. Go for the standard bear, get a heal. And that just leaves the bloody rose here, which we'll do just for the sake of getting as much wrath spent as possible. There we go. A sad display for mortal kind. And that brings us to level 81, which is shocking enough that I'm actually getting this far. Uh, for this one, we're going to get, I guess, Max Out Alchemy. So that way we get the achievement of Master Alchemist. Uh, we're going to get Rites of Carnage. <laughs> it will be a messy slot. And we're not getting much in Destruction, but that's perfectly fine. I don't necessarily need to use Rites of Carnage, but I will be using it for the Stokes of Flames or Infectious Lunacy. Because both seem uh, pretty useful to me, at least in my eyes, anyways. Okay, vampires, let's see. The stats are going pretty well, but we're going to want to boost up evasion a little bit. We're also going to want to boost up accuracy, I think. We'll get the accuracy up to 27. 
Okay. We'll keep our abomination just on the waiting there. We'll keep everything here staple or stable. And for the zombie, I guess we can boost up evasion. Yeah, we should probably do that. And we should be good. We'll boost up armor as well, just in case. You never know. As for creation, we still need to deal 65 more damage, which is three castings of the vampire's ability. Which is still going to take time, but that's perfectly alright. We'll stick with group one to make it a reality. Let's go see what the crest has to offer. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, I did say I was going to do it, so let's go to the Banshee. And let us change her skin. I guess we'll go with this one. I am actually quite a fan of this one. Why not? And I guess we can change some ghoul appearances. We'll go with uh, the green ghoul for here. And we'll go for the green here and... We'll go for the nice, beautiful red Dark Knight here. Yeah, I'm not sure why I have three costumes. I guess it might be the Halloween update going on. I did buy this in a uh, bundle, after all. But yeah, I guess I got a nun costume for uh, the Banshee, which is interesting. Apparently I got a third costume for the Vampire as well, which is weird. <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice look for the Abomination. Got the Bride. We'll give her the gold outlook. And we'll give him the golden can. Yeah, I'm a very much a fan of this uh, green Abomination. Alright, there we go. Got some new colors for our uh, minions. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely certain, but I think that's the case anyways. Alright, let's go with the uh, second group and let's go see the quest. Unearthly music drifts through the cold stone halls, distant enough that you can never quite trust your senses to tell you if it's real or imagined. However, as you progress, the music starts getting louder, and you order your undead to move to the source of this melody, eventually entering into a massive empty room where an organ stands towering against the wall. The magic that radiates from it is immense, and as soon as you step close to it, the melody stops. A sense of anticipation lingers in the air, as you realize that the organ is a living altar, and it's called you here, looking for a sacrifice. Oh, this'll sacrifice the minion. Ooh. Well, I do have enough spare parts to sacrifice the Dark Knights. Or do I want to sacrifice the Banshee? Ooh. Hmm. I think I'm going to sacrifice the Dark Knight this time. Sorry, Dark Knight, but, uh... Off you go. A dirge sounds through the cathedral as the Dark Knight begins to play. The battle hymn of undeath, making your minions that much stronger. As the Dark Knight crumbles to the ground, the music continues to linger, and you feel the necrotic power saturating the air. Alright, so for three battles, the Banshee, Infested, Mummy, and Dark Knight receives 20% less damage. However, the Dark Knight as a cost is dead, killed in the process. So what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves a new Dark Knight because he's actually pretty pog to have around. We will set him up with proper materials. We'll give him the best dust we can. Uh, we can't get him the best flesh but we can certainly give him the best armor, ectoplasm, and 
weapon we can give him. To him, the world is as hollow as his armor. And now we can uh, start making our new, I guess, new Death Knight here. Let's see. Okay, deals an additional damage equal to 80% the sum, or we can go with... Oh, right, we need to actually give him a brain first. One second. Let us give him a level 44 brain in compensation. Okay, for our damage, we're going to go with... An enemy loses 35... No, we're going to go with the Ravenous now, Hunger here. Prove yourself Let's see. Of my investment. Uh, deals an additional 3 to 4 damage for each buff or debuff. Deals additional damage. Okay, we're going to go with that. Futile hopes. Each time an enemy receives a buff, the Dark Knight deals additional damage. Uh, let's see. Each time an enemy receives a buff, no, we're going to go with the debuff, because that's really powerful with this group. Uh, dark Time, we're going to go with the boost to mana, because this is a mana group, after all. Uh, we're going to go for the... Let's go with Face to Faceless, and let's see, Heartless Slash. We're going to deal additional damage equal to our Knight's Armor Resistance. And we're going to boost up Evasion to High Hell, I think, to start with. Alright, that's maxed up. Alright, now we've got two points into armor. Let's just keep stacking this. There we go. 18 for all defenses there. We'll increase that, and we'll increase attack, I suppose. No, we're increasing dread, I think. And we'll increase accuracy a little bit. There we go. And we'll increase luck just by one point. There we go. That is our new Dark Knight setup. And honestly, I think we go for the Jester's Visage, unless I can think of something else. Uh, when receiving damage, Dominion gains four evasion until the end of combat. Interesting. I think for this build, we're actually going to want the Jester's Visage here. So we're going to go with Jester's Visage. And let's see. We've got 22 evasion versus what we've got here. We could, I guess, go with Raven Feathers here. Because uh, if we're going to be the focus here, we're going to get more attacks off on us, which will give us more evasion, which will just make things a lot better for us. We could minimize the damage, but I think the evasion is ultimately going to be best. And if I'm not mistaken, our current evasion would get us to 8, 8 plus 18, so 24. So, let's see... So we'd have 46, this would basically make, or the uh, Raven Feathers would basically make the Evasion chance 66%. Ah, I mean it's alright. I think I would be better off getting a full defense off though. Or at least a damage reduction. I think that might actually be a bit better. Or I could go with the Martyr Rags, which would uh, redirect all attacks to the Dark Knights, which would help our mummy, I suppose. Hmm. I guess there was also the Dark Knight's Heart as well. Or I could go with the 5% Vigor Restoration, which is nice. Um, I'm going to go with the Martyr Rags, I think. Oh, no, no, Raven Feathers. We're going to go Raven Feathers. We'll get the Raven Feathers so that way uh, the Dark Knight's going to be very elusive, very hard to hit. And when he is hit, then he isn't going to be suffering as much. Now to the battle here. And I guess we'll see how things play out. All right. Plague fall. We're going to start with the priestess here. You will soon embrace your new go. existence. 
We're gonna go with No Tomorrow. It's not gonna deal as much stress damage as we want, but it will be dealing enough, I suppose. Vengeance Beam. There we go, Crit Curse. Alright. That is a bona fide miss, nice. And do we get the buff because of Raven Feathers? Yes, we do. So every time he is hit, not dealt damage, he gets the boost from Raven Feathers. Oh, but he is going to suffer a lot of damage from the uh, Hand of the Righteous. Oh, no wait, it's only six, five to six. That isn't that bad, actually. Okay, some crits. Alright, let's go Garden of Death next. Even more cursing. Ah, there we go. Frail bodies fail you. Okay, we suffer some damage, but that's perfectly fine. I think we can get away with Ravenous Abyss just to get the round spent. And then we will probably do No Tomorrow again. That is three applications of the Raven Feather, and now he's at a 60% evasion chance, which is nice. We're gonna go Accelerando here. He dies so that you can live. Less damage for uh, us to worry about, I suppose. Uh, Vengeance Beam once more. Get that juicy crit curse going. Alright, he suffers the uh, insanity of Berserk. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's a solid miss. Uh, I guess we go with No Tomorrow, naturally. We are gonna go with Plague Fall now, and start spamming that. Get rid of, uh, get rid of her. Then we can start getting rid of the Knight here. We're probably gonna go with Focused Attacks now. There we go, get the Curse and debuff. Okay, let's see, what else we got? Oh, that's another damage bit. Okay, we're gonna go with, uh... I guess Paralyzing Scream. There we go. Get rid of all that, uh, evasion chance. He dies of a heart attack, this Black Bearer. And now we can use Plague Fall to go for the killer thing. Yep, there we go. Nice. Okay, we are given the broken orb, we've given some higher quality bones, got some other stuff here and there. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, we're almost there with the blood phantasm, but we're probably gonna swap to our physical group now. So we're gonna swap to our physical group. We're going to go to the Sacrificial Altar and sacrifice probably the Skeleton here. Yeah, we'll throw the Skeleton away. Why not? We'll get some bones, sharpened bones, which will allow us to ignore block and wards if we wish to equip it. Uh, Item-wise, let's see, what do we want? All enemies lose 22 evasion. Not bad. But the Spirit Spear is just too good to pass up right now. We're getting way too many buffs from it, I think. Gonna go with the gambling chip here, and then we're gonna go with our fear group, I think, to uh, wrap things up. Alright. Group 1 here. Let's see how they fare. And as a result, we've got quite a bit. We'll start with Funeral March, naturally. Okay, we're gonna go with Trench Loading to make ourselves more buff. Alright, we're gonna go with uh, Hunger for the Hearts first. And let's see, we're gonna go against the Inquisitor here, if we can, but we can't because we target the Knight first. We'll go Adore him for that nice juicy buff for damage. And now we wait. All 
right, with that we can throw down a proper protect on the zombie, I think. There we go, just in case. All right, we can throw down a light caliber if we want, but I'm actually gonna go for the abyssal bombardment. Strictly because I think it's gonna be more beneficial to us, I'm going to get rid of the Inquisitor's block. There we go. That'll make the bride's bloody rose all the better. My kingdom because 105 comes. crit is always nice. <laughs> okay, that's a double miss. Rip. Alright, that is uh, taking out the Shard Bearer's block. Nice. Alright. Nice. We're gonna go Unrestrained Hunger, most likely. Get that juicy buffer going. There we go. Unrestrained Hunger shifts him to the forward front stance. He is suffering some trouble from the bonfire, but I'm not too worried. And hey, we managed to get the kill with the, uh... Managed to get the kill there, so we can now spend Light Caliber to take out the Standard Bear, probably. Because that is going to be annoying. Well, not really, but... He's there. Probably best to do it. Let us use Hypnosis, finally, to get some more... Wrath and get some Bleed going, so we have the chance to unlock the Ghoul better. Get Bloody Rose going, get the kills in. Off we go. Oh, remove buffs. Okay, I guess we. That's interesting. Hmm. Ah, bonfire coming in. That's not good. Uh, let us go for the Inquisitor here with the uh, attacks from our abomination. And now we will target the one here. And then we finalize with our zombie here, and go for the kill. Done is done. Oh, you know, if this keeps up, I'll be done purging the world ahead of schedule. Alright. It is time for the final man. Or final boss. So let's go to the ancient coffin, let's grab ourselves a new undead here. Or, no, an item, I suppose. Uh, after missing attack, the minion receives a plus 8 accuracy until the end of combat. Can't stack more than 5 times. We're gonna go Funeral Coin. It is tribute. That critical is just too hard to pass up. And I guess that just leaves the main group here. Our OG, uh... Fear group. Is there anything we want to equip, though? Hmm. I think the biggest thing we would want to equip is... Well, hold on. Let's see. After killing an enemy, the minion who dealt the killing blow receives two vigor buff for the rest of the game. Hmm. Stacks up to ten times, does not trigger when killing summoned creature. Okay. This is pretty interesting. This is good for the early game, not so much late game. But it is there, I suppose. I think it's in our best interest to go with Hex Bomb here. It embellishes if we're gonna go with my group two, undead features. Because we are dealing with a boss per chance here, so all the better to get that off. Although I suppose I could go with something else. It doesn't really matter. As long as we're going fear, we should be fine. Alright, stat wise, let's see, we've already got max there. We could increase our max luck, but I think I'm going to go Ward here, just to make him more defensive. Defensed. Uh, we should be fine on everything here for the Infested. Uh, let's see, Banshee. Naturally, your evasion's just crazy, so we shouldn't need to do anything too crazy here. Uh, we got some rare quality upgrades if we want to use those. Uh, I guess we could replace the Infested Bones here. There we go. Banshee, not so much item-wise. Okay. So I guess the Mummy, or the uh, Infested gets an upgrade to his evasion, which is not bad. I think that's the only thing we can physically do here. We did, didn't get any unlocks here, so unfortunately we are stuck with our group currently. But... 
considering the group that we've got, I'm quite satisfied with the results. Let's go deal with the boss. The Grand Magister is a man of unrivaled power and a heart of ice. It was under his oversight that the bargain with the Dwarven Alchemist was struck. The suffering he has caused did not trouble his sleep, even as he makes plans to wage war against other nations and races. In the end, he got a war, but not the one he wanted. Iritus proved to be a cunning and deadly foe, forcing the Magister to take action personally. He will use every last tool, every sacred incantation, every scrap of the Order's vast reserves to end the Necromancer in person. Then the people will flock to him, their savior, and he will lead them all as their new savior and saint. To battle. It is time to completely demolish literally everything he's been working so hard to protect. Light this world. All right, we're gonna start by doing as much fear to him as possible. Okay, why is he? Okay, why why is he in the back? Okay, that's not good. Okay, um, I guess we'll use we are nothing here to get us into the first position. Off we go. Kind of surprised everybody swapped positions like that, but okay. I guess that's a gimmick with this fight. But thankfully, that's the important bit about this. Okay, we're gonna go... Impending Misery, so that way we can move forward a bit. I guess we could do the Impending Misery to him. There we go. Ooh, hope there will still That'll get us into position more. Okay, that's a miss. Nice. Let us start by using... I guess we can use Slake with Darkness here. Oh, wait, hold on. We wanted to get a specific buff. Or debuff on him, didn't we? Alright, we want him to... Yeah, we want to use Blind first. That'll reduce his, uh... That'll reduce his accuracy significantly. Then we can use, I guess... Yeah, we'll use Shattering Howl here to get the debuff going. Alright, we're going to move... Well, no, we're going to keep you in position for now. Uh, we're going to go with... Let's see. We'll take out the Elite Freak. Well, uh... Okay, we're going to go with Lingering Breath here. Get rid of that ward. Uh, let's start by activating... Uh, well, no, let's use Move Right here. Through pain. Let us use No Tomorrow here. There we go. Alright, that's a miss. Nice. <laughs> Alright, now we can start using Vengeance Beam without too much trouble. Oh, that's gonna leave a mark. Nice. That's some big curses coming in. Now we can start taking out the, uh, the lot of them. Ah, Holy Aegis Dance. Okay. Let us go with Accelerando to get rid of their uh, attacks. Alright, that's a heart attack. Nice. I can vibe with that. Okay, they tried but failed. That gets us some Raven Feather buffer going for us. Nice. We are going to shift you right. Strength through pain. And then we can start using Garden of Death. Nice. Get that nice juicy curse in. Cleave them. How much debuffs does he have? <clears throat> he's got he's got Vengeance Beam and Garden of Death now. Uh, let's go with Ravenous Abyss here, just so we can heal for our Death Knights. Uh, Vengeance Beam. We've already got that, so I guess we go Dire Curse if we can. Uh, we can remove any buffs he has, though, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, I guess we'll go Dire Curse on the Elite Priestess. 
Because if she goes down, then nobody's going to be healing, right? So all the better. Oh, he is going for the Order Sentence. Deals 300 damage to the Chosen Minion. Okay, um... Moves target to a random position. If I do that, then he should move his stance. Yep, there we go. All the more reason to use the Banshee. Ashes to ashes, dust. To yeah, dust. it isn't that bad, I don't think, no. It's a lot... It's a lot easier than I would say the second boss, I'd say. The Your second boss had body some concerns, I must admit. And if I'm not... If I'm not mistaken, I believe the second boss was the dwarf, I think, with his uh, buddy. Because they, de they dealt uh, multiple attacks in a given round. Like, they managed to do like six attacks each round, which is pretty nasty. We can just give him a heart attack, though. And we should... Oh. Oh, we got round two, it seems. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that, okay. Ascended Magister, I see. Well, you know what? You can be a, uh, inact- Oh, right. I'm dumb. <laughs> ah, well. Alright, let's get rid of the wards, and let's go from there, I suppose. Accelerando. There we are. My mistake to not- Well, I guess we do have the mana for it, I suppose, so... Oh, I guess we swap position. Interesting. We're going to, uh... Do we swap position here, or do we make an intentional move? I think we go for, um... Strength through pain. Yeah, let's do that. Then we'll use Garden of Death here, because now there's no more wards protecting them. That'll get the curse going, which is gonna just make them suffer even more. We're gonna go with Dark Cleansing this time around, to get some more mana to work with. Okay, they're targeting our ghoul. Let's see, we're gonna want Impending Misery, I think. Yeah, we'll go Impending Misery. That way we can shift everybody back to this position. We are then going to use the Accelerando to get the debuff going. Nice. The Holy, the Holy Knight attempts the debuff. Okay. Let's see what that debuff is. Decrease damage and... Uh, Decree of Vengeance. Decrease damage dealt by 15, damage received increased by 15. Interesting. Okay, in that case, let's just start pelting uh, the Leap Priestess. There we go. Bring her down to zero. <laughs> Sanity. We're gonna go with uh, No Tomorrow this time. And I think we want to blind the Magister again. Yeah. Let's make sure he's not attacking uh, anytime soon. Let's go with Vengeance Beam to get ourselves the... Well, yeah, let's get Vengeance Beam going. Carve open get as their much, uh, Get as much... Uh, get much sanity burn. Oh, wait. Uh, no, it is actually the ones with the... Um, it is the guy in the second act with the two mechas. At least that's my personal uh, thoughts on it anyways. Okay. I think we can get away with... Yeah, let's just do Paralyzing Scream. That'll get rid of any evasion he has. Not that we do have any. But yeah, no, it's the uh, one with the two mechas. Okay, we're gonna go with Plague Fall here. Perish. That's some juicy crits going in. Nice. Alright, we're gonna go Dark Cleansing here. 
and start regenerating our mana just so we can deal even more damage to him. Okay. I think we go with Impending Misery here. Yeah, just so we can get it back in position. There will still be enough left to reanimate. Alright, we're gonna go with... Yeah, Paralyzing Scream. Yeah, yeah, no, he's suffering quite a lot. Okay, uh, shift in position. I guess we'll go this for Lingering Breath. There we go. Even more curses. Uh, let's go face to faceless here. Get as much crits in fear as possible. Uh, let's see. He can die from uh, stress damage, it seems, so that's good. We'll get the Dire Curse going. That's an even... We got another crit. Oh! He's dead! Nice! Not that bad, but the shuffling another was concerning. Towards my eternal kingdom. Alright, we managed to get the Ashes of the Burned Witch. We managed to get the Alchemist's Hand. We got the kill for the uh, Humanary Tokens. And we got a level 45 Brain. And with that... I think we're done? But before we do anything else, I think it's in our best interest to finish off the Iyer Tree and whatever else we got. We're going to make Infectious Lunacy a Rivers staple. Will run red. And we managed to get quite a bit of levels with uh, our Dark Knight and all that because of this er, fight. Uh, let's just boost up our Dread next with the Death Knight at this point. Okay, we'll increase our luck there. Uh, increase luck. Uh, increase evasion. There we go. Alright, let's go with group two. And time to head towards the exit. Alright, let's see. What's going on here? Sorry to keep you waiting. Had to slaughter a couple thousand armored meat bags on my way here. But you know how it is. After all, how could I forget my beloved foes, hmm? Oh, I was thinking of having a little party to celebrate my victory. And I came here to hand out your invitations personally. You who wants to fight me and imprison me will now call me Master Obey. What is the meaning of this? You have done well. The potential for corruption lies in all life. And when it grows too great, only the Avatar of Death can provide the cure. This once noble order has become a poison for the soul and a blight upon the land. And now that it is gone, life can begin anew. Return to your grave, for your work here is done. You aim to deny me my rightful kingdom? Yours will be a kingdom of peace. Your name will be honored and feared until you are needed again. Take my offer, Necromancer, or resist. Your fate is already woven. Fate? A Necromancer knows much about fate. Would you like me to tell you what it is? Death. It is the inescapable end that awaits all mortals. Especially the sanctimonious idiots who presume to use me. I am the Puppet Master, and in death, you will all dance upon my streams. So be it. Let us witness the repeat of history. An 
unfamiliar power swept through the cemetery where the heroes of old were laid to rest. The ground trembles in its wake as the souls of the exalted were called back from their repose. Together as one, a new army rose up against the Ark Necromancer, unlike the corrupt mortals and beasts he had faced thus far. Hailing from a different age, returned in their prime, all the heroes of old have returned, myths and legends coming to stand by side, side by side, as the finer bulwark against death. But even they might not withstand against Iteris, Iritus, and the power he has attained, wearing both darkness and terror like a fine cloak, as he threads upon the land. Fitting that it would all end on a grave, and as the stranger vanishes, only his words remain echoing in the necromancer's mind, further fueling the flame of his ire. And with that, we only have one more... Uh, yeah, we only have one more goal ahead of us. And that is to take down this plethora of uh, entities around us, I guess. Honestly, though, I think I've done pretty well, and I'm going to wrap it up here. I've been doing uh, one stream for every floor, so it's been going pretty well, I'd say. For next stream, probably what we're going to do is uh, go along here, go to this quest, or we're probably going to go to this quest, I'm not sure on the specific route, but at the very least it looks like we're going to be getting two quests out of this ordeal, so yeah. Yeah, we did pretty well, all things considering. For those who are on YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell notification if you want to see my stuff. I stream daily, so if you want to catch my streams, you can catch me 3 to 7, MST time, usually. This is sort of a Halloween special, so, yeah. If you want to catch my streams, the best way to do so is to search me up at twitch.tv slash fmipon. You can find me on my YouTube channel, alternatively, and you should be able to find the Twitch link there. Or you can check the link down below in the description. But yeah, those of you from Twitch or those of you from tu YouTube come to Twitch, welcome. Your support is always appreciated. Appreciated. The more followers I have, or rather, if you want to support me, the best way you can do so is provide me follows. The more follows I have, the more content I can give you guys. Once I hit, uh, if you see the bottom, the bar in the bottom left corner of the screen, once that hits 50, and I get three concurrent viewers. Alright, seriously, here it is. <laughs> here it is, I'm doing my outro, calm down. <laughs> but yeah, no, once I hit that that and get three concurrent viewers, I should be able to get or apply for affiliate status. And hopefully I will be able to get more stuff out of this and I, I'll i be able to give you guys some more content to work with. Uh, if For those of you on Twitch who want to find my YouTube channel, the best way to do so is search either search me up at fymapon at youtube.com or you can, uh, if you scroll down from the stream, you should be able to find a YouTube picture. If you click that picture, it will direct you to my YouTube channel. Alternatively, and while not the most best, is if you go into the description of the VODs, you should be able to find a link to the YouTube link down below. But yeah, if you want to find my older content, the best way you can do so is go to the YouTube channel. It has everything from day one, so if you want to find something specific, it's all there, all sorted, organized, and pretty much good to go. If you want to find my newer stuff, you check Twitch. It goes for at least seven days, so if you want to find something specific there, it's all there, organized to some degree, and prepped for your viewing pleasure. But I digress. I'm done here. I hope you guys enjoyed today's stream. I know I did, and I will see you guys next stream, which is probably going to be Pathfinder. Take care, everyone, and have a good day.